So let's get out to business. So I have classified the traits of Ferrum through particular headings. So just with that heading, you'll be able to understand what the Ferrum are. First one is iron will. She possesses an iron will. She gathers courage to succeed and leaves no stone unturned to make it a reality. Okay. So she has a will, she has an ambition and her willpower is very high and she will do it. She will do it properly, perfectly, and she will do it with a lot of effort. Okay. Makes dreams into realities. That's what they say. She is in charge of how she feels, not anyone else. She is in charge. She is the alpha. She is the omega. Okay. She chooses to be positive. That's another thing of Ferrum. They choose to be positive people. Okay. So remember that iron will. So she possesses an iron will, gathers courage, high in courage. Okay. Makes dreams into reality. She's in charge of how she feels and she chooses to be positive. Next, strong defenses. They put up a strong defense against the external world. They aren't moved or convinced that easily. Okay. Why? Why does they? Ha why does this happen? Why this particular trait comes? So if you go to Shankaran, he says that it's probably due to strict parenting and being forced to do something against their will. Okay. Try to understand that being forced to do something against their will. When you think of this particular statement, you think of many remedies, especially silica then carcinosin, then uh, many others, but these are the main remedies, silica and carcinosin. But how does the ferrum react? The ferrum reacts by rebelling. Okay, they will rebel, they put up strong defenses and they will defend who they are. Okay, they will not agree to this. So there is an example if in ferrum met in Shankaran, he says that the woman is, uh, she gets a dream that the uh, the parents are forcing the woman to get married. Okay. That's why it reflects in her dreams that she's getting married against her will. Okay. So remember that reaction of Ferrum is important here. They rebel against it. Okay. Next is duty bound. Duty bound, not necessarily being business or other jobs could be even at home doing chores, could be the workers at home, et cetera, et cetera. If they are duty bound, they could be a pharaoh. Whatever she is, her duties are executed at the utmost sincerity and dedication. Okay. Nothing is impossible. Sky is the limit. Keep in mind when you're reading pharaoh, you can always compare with other heavy metals and noble metals like Kali and Aurum. Okay. They are very, very similar to pharaoh. I'll differentiate later. So they have a never give up attitude, the unyielding. Just like it's physically impossible to bend an iron, it is nearly impossible to change the ideals of a ferrum. Okay, so this is the doctrine of signature. Okay, next is self-identity. A ferrum lady projects her self-identity. For example, you can go through this. She doesn't change her surname to her husband's surname, which is a common practice in India. Okay, so you can try to understand, I am who I am. I am not going to change my identity. She doesn't change her surname. Okay. So this is a very important keynote. We all know this. Intolerance to contradiction, cannot bear contradiction. React with anger and violence. I told you, na, they rebel. So they react with anger and violence. So they fight to defend themselves of the fight to defend herself. Yeah. So this is the part of ferrum which we all know, all right, this is the healthy ferrum. But there is another part of ferrum where the emotions take over the ferrum. See, you have to understand that a human psyche is built on two uh, criteria. One is intellect and the other one is emotion. Okay. Ferrums are quite intellectual. They are rigid in what they are. But as I mentioned before, if they're contradicted frequently and if they're made irritated frequently, they can become emotional. Okay. So then what do you get? We'll see. There are five factors or features which make up a ferrum personality. So one is hypersensitivity. Next is changeability. 
debility, sentimentality, and craving for sympathy. So remember these things, these five headings. You won't get this much often in books, so you can just listen to them. Hypersensitivity, changeability, debility, sentimentality, and craving for sympathy. We'll discuss each of them in detail. So the first one is hypersensitivity. Yeah. So the hypersensitivity of ferrum manifests itself in both the mind and the body. Here we can go to ferrum med, and we have a couple of symptoms which we can relate to this. Okay. At the mental level, we see high irritability showing itself in violence. Okay. Sensitive to criticism and least contradiction. This you all know. Anxiety fell from the least trifles. Okay. The anxiety shows itself in the form of dreams. That is, they are fighting wars, battles. They are drowning. So it's like uh, a sequence. You know, they try to fight. They fight, fight, fight. But if they lose, they drown. That's why war, fights, battles, and drownings. So the overwhelming anxiety eventually leads to paranoia. Yeah. So this is a Fermat symptom. I'm sure everybody knows it. Extreme sensitivity to the crumpling of paper. Okay. This could go to the body as well. So. Yeah. So what do we see at the body level? Multiple food allergies, very, very important in ferum, especially ferum met, okay? Especially eggs, intolerance to eggs is a classical five mark symptom or a three mark symptom of ferum, especially ferum met. They cannot tolerate eggs, they cannot tolerate milk. If they eat eggs, they have diarrhea, they get indigestion, okay? Please remember this, especially eggs, meat, milk, and drugs. So if you get a patient with multiple food allergies, you can always think of ferum if the personality matches. Okay, urticaria, eczema as a result of food and drug allergies. Then in the GIT, I told you GIT is quite sensitive in a ferum. So there is recurrent gastritis, dyspepsia, irritable bowel syndrome manifested at the GI level. Okay, so all your uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, everything can come under this. Also, okay. Okay, so next to the respiratory sphere, we see allergic rhinitis, bronchitis, and bronchial asthma. Okay, yeah, so that is hypersensitivity. Next is changeability. So you've noticed one part of ferum. Now let's look at the other one. Ferum has multiple desires, ambitions to fulfill, but very soon she's completely depleted mentally and physically. This is in the end stage of ferum. Okay, initially they are quite ambitious. They're quite uh, strong-willed, they're hard workers, they're rigid, but eventually as the age progresses, they become like that. They become completely depleted mentally and physically. And the reason being is changeability. Okay. Yeah. So this particular trait of ferrum shows us the soric and the tubercular traits of ferrum. Uh, if you remember, tubercular miasm is a miasm of high erraticity. It keeps changing without any reason. So that is why ferrum is predominantly a tubercular remedy. Okay, Tubercular is nothing but soric and syphilitic combined. So both the features are there in ferrum. The psoriasis is the deficiency miasm. We know this. If you go read from H.A. Roberts, you can read that psoriasis deficiency miasm. They lack energy the willpower, the positivity, and the zeal after a certain point, okay? So this point is seen in ferrum as well, where we are, they are highly zealous initially, and they become low on zeal later, okay? Yeah. So I mentioned, to, mentioned this to you before. The tubercular miasm is the miasm of erraticity and changeability. So remember these two terminologies, Tubercular miasm combined is understood. Okay, they are both seen in ferrum. So, if you go to Herring's guiding symptoms, there is one statement which he has written: changeable disposition, one evening low spirited, the next evening excessively cheerful. Okay, so you can compare many remedies over here. Especially, I think at the top of my mind, I think Crocus sativa can come. Saffron Crocus sativa has that. They keep changing their moods, don't they? One evening they are happy, the other evening they are sad. The other evening, they want to kiss people, they want to hug people. That is a desire to embrace, okay, which is seen in Crocus sativa. 
Then other changeable remedies you can think of is anacardium, another remedy, possessed by two wills, the good and the bad. So next is debility. At the level of mind, we see low spirited, easy mental fatigue, doesn't complete tasks, quit halfway. Okay. But keep in mind, this is not initially, this is in the later stages. Okay. Yeah. So at the level of body, what do we see? Loss of vital fluids, I told you, hemorrhages, seminal emissions, and diarrheas. Okay. Especially hemorrhage. You know that serum is very, very good for hemorrhages. Anemias, iron deficiency due to chronic diseases, hence affecting the spleen and the liver. Okay. And softening of bones leading to easy fractures. This is another important thing of ferrum. They have soft bones, okay, which could lead to easy fractures. And relaxation of muscles leading to easy sprains and organ prolapses. We saw this in bellis perennis in the composite last, last class, and also we saw it in Arnica Montana. Okay. Yeah. So debility at the level of immune system leading to increased healing time, susceptibility to tuberculosis, etc. In this particular sphere, especially ferrum force. Ferrum force is indicated in tuberculosis, but only in the initial stages where it hasn't led to uh, what do you say, this caseous necrosis and all that. Okay. Granuloma formation. In the initial stages of TB. You can think of ferrum fos, okay, ferrum fos. Yeah. So this is one point which not everybody might know is a feature of ferrum. They are highly sentimental, they're highly nostalgic, okay? So there's a difference between brooding and nostalgia. Brooding means we always think of the negative things, okay? We think, think, think of the negative things. In nostalgia, we think of the past, but we think of the good things and we miss them. So if you had a very good childhood, if you have very good friends, you think of the positive things about that friend. If you miss him now, if you think about the positive things about that particular person, it is nostalgia. But if you think of the negative things, it becomes brooding. Okay. So ferrums are highly sentimental with multiple attachments and desires. She tries very hard to hold on to them but eventually fails due to changeability, okay? Yeah. So whatever desires they have, they have many, many desires, but reality doesn't allow the desires to come out. So then what happens? The desires are pushed into the subconscious and comes out in the form of dreams, okay? Dreams of meeting old friends, I told you. This is more of a nostalgia, okay? Dreams of old, secure school days. And dreams of family members, like long lost. If you have lost a dear loved one, if you think of the good things about that person, that's how a ferrum met approaches, okay? Okay, remember these dreams, okay? They're quite important. They can ask you for your uh, uh, MCQs, okay? So meeting old friends, old secure school days, and family members long lost, okay? And finally, the last part, which is craving for sympathy. The ferrum desire sympathy, they, desires that they desire attachments like phosphorus, calcarea, pulsatilla, okay, et cetera, silica, so many other, magnetism, okay. These two are lost when they react with anger. So what happens is, one more thing you got to know about ferrum, ferrum has the anxiety of conscience as if guilty of a crime. The family is very important for them. Maintaining peace in the family is very important for them. Just like your magnesium, just like Kali. That's why they're very close to these two remedies. Okay, even Aurum can come. Okay. So because of the anger of Ferrum, because of the explosion of emotions, there could be a split in the family. Okay. And they don't want that. They always try to get it back. Okay. They always try to keep the family close. So that's why both desire sympathy, desire attachments are lost when they react with anger. So what happens when they get angry? The familial bond is disrupted, hence leading to remorse, anxiety, and guilt. Please remember this rubric, anxiety of conscience as if guilty of a crime. Okay, it's very important for Ferrum. Yeah. They will fight till they run out of energy to get back the familial integrity. Very, very important point. This is where you should compare with Aurum. Aurum also is like this. 
Aurum takes responsibility of the whole family. And in case they fail in that responsibility, they crumple and they go into suicidal tendencies. Okay, until then, Aurum is a king. But after that, literally they collapse. Okay. Yeah. So that's with Ferum. Okay.